I was involved in painting in the shelter. Um, we had an, a new master come to the school, a master called Mr. Allen, and he was a proper art master. And I can remember him mixing up these power paints there. Um, they were, my memory serves me right, they were in big tins and mixed them up in like uh, baking tins. And how they have survived, I don't know, because they were just a powder of substance. Now the painting, Mr. Allen thought this would be good as art classes. We used to march down into the air raid shower as a class. There wasn't like the attempt at shading or any sort of relief on them. They were basically primary class. Everyone had a go at them, really, as far as I remember. It wasn't necessarily selected artistic boys who did them. And Mr. Allen would then mark off in sections of what he wanted painted. And we'd all have a section to paint. So, my feelings, and I hope I'm correct, and I feel I'm correct, that it was a subject of art, and we went down in separate classes. Now, I was in some of the first to do that. As you go down the air shelter, turn left, that passageway along there was where I remember doing some of the painting. picture you see on the left was inspired by Robert Louis Stevenson's Treasure Island. In it we see Long John Silver standing by the Admiral Benbow Inn. This is followed by the discovery of the treasure map by Jim Hawkins, Squire Trelawney and Dr Lisley. The picture continues with a further treasure map scene and meeting of Jim Hawkins and Ben Gunn on the island. Finally, there is the discovery of the empty treasure chest by Long John Silver, Jim Hawkins and the Pirates. To the right is the Pilgrim's Progress. This is a symbolic story, in other words, one not to be taken literally. In this painting, we see Evangelist point the way forward to Christian and Christian wade through the Slough of Despond. We then see Christian arrive at the house of the interpreter who shows him aspects of the Christian faith and life. This type of story is called an allegorical tale and was written by John Bunyan. Christian continues his journey with his burden which he then loses at the sight of the cross. Turn to the right and the next picture is based on a Nordic poem composed over 1,000 years ago. In this painting, we see Beowulf setting sail for Daneland. The next mural shows King Horogarth sitting on his throne in the great Mead Hall guarded by Viking warriors. The next painting depicts an aged Beowulf standing aside whilst the young warrior Wiglaf slays the dragon that has been terrorising Beowulf's kingdom. The next wall on the left shows images from Robin Hood, which is an old English folklore legend, originally in ballad form. In the first painting we see Robin and two of his men in Sherwood Forest. On the other side of this corridor, we see three of the main characters in the story, Friar Tuck, King Richard and Robin Hood, and again they are seen in Sherwood Forest. The 
Snow White is the theme for our next paintings. This is a German fairy tale, but in our version, the scenes have been adapted for obvious reasons. The first panel shows English cottages in a typical English landscape, complete with the village church. The end wall shows gallows on a hill. This image is in marked contrast to the version created by Disney. The final Snow White painting is the apple tree scene and you can see an unpainted apple next to the Snow White character. You will also notice that her costume is more medieval looking than the one in the Disney version. The next series of pictures is inspired by Daniel Defoe's Robinson Crusoe. This is about the survival of a man shipwrecked on a remote island. The first scene is Robinson Crusoe setting up a calendar, building a house, weaving, goat rearing and building a boat. In the next scene he cures animal skins, grows crops and ferries provisions. Then we see Crusoe sailing, chopping down a tree and catching a turtle. This sequence of paintings concludes with Crusoe finding a footprint, meeting Friday and then feeling thankful for his rescue. The final painting in the shelter is from Jonathan Swift's Gulliver's Travels. This was a political satire about a man visiting a land of tiny people. We see Gulliver visiting the palace, but the painting is unfinished. After the palace, there is a grid structure on the walls in preparation for more paintings, which were never completed. We have now reached the end of the virtual tour. I hope you have enjoyed hearing about the stories that are illustrated in the pictures down in the boys' air raid shelter. Goodbye. <laughs>